Kyle Dubas takes his home run swing, acquiring a former Conn Smythe Trophy winner in a blockbuster deal as the Maple Leafs put Tampa Bay and Boston on notice. Hey, everyone. Welcome into another Sun Sports Roundtable. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Sports columnist Steve Simmons and Toronto Sun Maple Leafs beat writer Terry Koshan. And today's video will be very Leafs-centric, guys. And how can it not be after the late-night trade on Friday night when the Maple Leafs picked up Ryan O'Reilly and Noel Achari from St. Louis for a pair of minor leaguers and a boatload of draft picks. Uh, Steve, there have been a ton of names linked to the Maple Leafs, whether it be Patrick Kane, Timo Meyer, but is Ryan O'Reilly ultimately the best fit for this team? I think he's the best fit for the team. I think the one thing you have to take a step back on is trade deadline is greatly overrated. And a player that you add at this point in the season tends not to impact teams very much. And if you look back at the teams that have been successful in the playoffs year after year after year, what happens? Nathan McKinnon and, and, and Kale McCarr play great. Or Kucherov and Point and Hedman play great. Or Vasilevsky plays great. The best players on the best teams play great. And you can trade and you can do all the things Kyle Dubas is trying to do, but it still comes down to Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and William Nylander. And if they're not great, it's not going to matter come playoff time. The way I look at it, Steve, is this um, O'Reilly and Achari really strengthen the Leafs down the middle. And I don't think anybody's expecting either one of them to be over, an overtime winner or anything in the first round of the playoffs against Tampa. But when you have that strength now that the Leafs do, uh, I, would, I would put that center group up against any other team in the league. Obviously, I might have done it before anyway. But it, it just gives them that, that, that steel rod right down the middle. And then... On the fourth line, you really have two options, and Achari and David Camp. So, uh, you know, are they going to be massive difference, difference makers? Probably not, because like, like you say, Steve, it, you know, the, the, the people that you pay to do that usually do do that come playoff time. But I think it's a hell of a supporting cast now, really, for those uh, top players on the Leafs. Well, there's, there's a certain unfairness about the way the National Hockey League playoffs are run. Three of the five or six best teams in the league are all in the same division. And because of that, uh, it's very possible that, well, it's not possible. One of, one of the three or five best teams in the league is going to be out yeah. at the first round. Two will be out by the second round. Um, and, and you can put together whatever lineup you have. There's no assurance you're going to beat Tampa Bay. There's no assurance you're going to beat Boston. Yeah. But, I, but as you point out, Terry, if you don't have that strength down the middle, mm-hmm. You have no chance. Yeah. Well, I, one more thing I'll make on this. There's no assurance Tampa's going to beat Toronto either, no matter with what they do in the next few weeks. Now let's look at it that way as well, right? I mean, I know that Tampa might, you could say, might be the favorite going in just with the experience that they have. But, you know, we'll have to see. I think the thing we should, we should remember about the uh, Tampa-Toronto first round, too, is we're talking about the great players and what they're capable of doing. Tampa will have the edge and goal in Vasilevsky, no matter what he's done during the regular season over, I'm assuming, Ilya Samsonov. So that'll be a story point, but uh, that's a few months before we get to that. Absolutely. And all roads, uh, as we mentioned there, lead towards Tampa Bay in that first round of the playoffs and potentially Boston in the uh, second round. And I guess you kind of spoke a little bit about that, Terry, but with these additions, Ryan O'Reilly, Noel Achari, um, would you favor the Leafs against either one of these teams in a seven-game series, or is it still so hard to say? Because we know come playoff time, uh, anything can really happen. Well, I, I, no one's going to favor anybody against the Boston Bruins. There's just you know, they're going to be the Stanley Cup favorite going in. I mean, the New York Rangers probably have something to say about that once the playoffs get going. But they've shown no signs really here of falling off. And, uh, you know, again, with with, with Tampa, it, it, we'll see. I mean, it, it, goaltending on out in playoffs and special teams and all these sorts of things, I, I just think that the Leafs are stronger than they were uh, Friday at noon. And, uh, you know, the luxury now of, of, of uh, Kyle Dubas getting ahead of the trade deadline like he did, as he always does, is it gives Sheldon Keith more time to figure out where these pieces best fit. I'll be surprised if either one of these guys is on the wing once the playoffs get going, but then you say, okay, well, who's on the respective wings? How does O'Reilly potentially fit into that top six? And then if not, then the top nine. But uh, as far as favorites go, I, I think we have to look at, too, what happens now with each of these teams before March 3rd. And if the Leafs are able to add another defenseman. You know, the Bruins and Lightning have been relatively quiet to this point. They haven't done much. So 
We'll see what they do trade trade wise, but uh, right now, I think it just they make the Leafs a better team. Period. The Bruins are fascinating to me because the President's Trophy winners tend not to have great playoffs, mm-hmm. and here's a team that's you know almost on record pace to have like one of the greatest seasons we've ever had. You know, the last team to do that, Tampa Bay. What happened to them? They lost first round. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of pressure when you have the kind of season Boston has had. Not that there's not going to be pressure in Toronto and Tampa Bay, yeah. but there's a lot of pressure. And I wonder, because the Bruins are so one-line centric, mm-hmm. if that doesn't make for the kind of team that a coaching matchup might be a really interesting series. And, well, and I, I don't know if the Leafs can beat Tampa Bay, but I, I'm not – if they ever do, I can see them then going on and beating Boston. I think you think the, the remember what Boston, Boston is. It's just they're a club that just carries themselves differently. We've seen it both times they've been in Toronto this this uh, this season. Talking to them in Boston a few weeks ago with them, and there's a there's a different mentality there. And the funny thing is, you know, they haven't won since 2011. A few holdovers from that group, of course, and Bergeron and uh, Marchand especially. But there's the, just the way that they carry themselves and. You know, I, it is a one-line team. I don't say a one-line team, Steve, but there is some depth there. And, I, you know, I think the bigger issue to me would be can that Bruins goaltending hold up under a long playoff run? And Jeremy Swayman and uh, Linus Olmark, I, I would have questions about that until I actually see it happening. So, you know, I, I still think that the Bruins coming out of the division are going to be that favorite. But, uh, you know, we'll see if I can be proven wrong once the playoffs actually get going. I love the way you say they haven't won since 2011. You know, those of us in Toronto look at that as, you know, that was yesterday. Yeah. And they played t- game seven of the Stanley Cup final in 2019. Right. So it's, it's well, not like these guys haven't been there before. Right. Well, um, this is what I mean. The, the way that they the way that they are and the way they have the belief in themselves, uh, Bergeron and Marchand just carry that about them. And the Leafs don't have that. I mean, they've got it in, in, in bits and pieces, if you will, with guys who have won. By that, I mean guys who have won cups elsewhere. And really, I'm, I'm talking about O'Reilly and Jake Muzzin, and Muzzin, as we are assuming, will not be a factor anyway. But they haven't done it together with this team, and uh, I think that's the difference. And finally, guys, there's a little under two weeks until the trade deadline. Steve, what more does Kyle Dubas need to do before 3 p.m. on March 3rd? I think you make depth moves now. Yeah. You make, you know, you, need an, you always need defensemen. I don't know how many years in the playoffs you've watched, but teams go eight, nine deep on defense in the playoffs. And I think, you know, they picked up Timmons, and that was a nice pickup earlier in the season. Um, I would love to find a way to see the Leafs find a way to replace Justin Hall in their lineup. Because I still think under pressure and under playoff pressure, he seems to wilt. And so if they can pick up a defenseman that could replace Hall, I think that would be the pickup that I would look for. If I'm Kyle Dubas. Well, I like the depth idea too. I think Luke Shen would be a nice piece for the Leafs because he is a depth guy and you're not some, he's not somebody you're necessarily be running out there every other night in the playoffs. Um, and, and that would be it. I would think, Steve, that the defense, I mean, I think that they're set at forward and I take Dubas at his word, but regarding the goaltending because he keeps reiterating it. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, they're, they're not, there's not much wiggle room for them in goaltending anyway. I don't think anyone that they could go out and get necessarily would be better than the options in, say, a, a Joe Wall or a uh, Eric Schalgren if, if it comes to that. And you hope it doesn't. But, uh, you know, the way Matt Murray's injury history is, um, I'm sure it gives Kyle Dubas a little bit of pause for thought, but that's not what we're seeing or, or hearing about regarding the goaltending. I'm with you. You can't have too many defensemen. You can slot in a Timmins or or a Jordy Ben uh, if you need be, but as far as Justin Hall goes, you know, the, I think the Leafs really like what he does in the penalty kill, and I don't know he'd be a guy that'd be coming out necessarily. I think the one guy you have to think about too, or, or is just you talk about who can un- withstand the pressure of the playoffs, or Sandy and Lilligren. So they don't have that experience. I know they have to get it somehow. You can only get it by playing in the playoffs. So. A lot of a lot of uh, um, uh, potentials there, I guess, for the Leafs on the blue line. The fact of the matter is, it's, it's a good, solid group now. But adding to it, I think, would be prudent for sure. I'm going to go back to my point on the first question about your best players better be your best players. Yeah. Um, if Morgan Riley doesn't up his game yeah. in a series with Victor Hedman and in a series with that Tampa Bay defense, and if he doesn't, and if, and if the Boston second round. And Boston, I think, has the best defense in the NHL. And Morgan Riley doesn't play like a star. Yeah. 
that I don't think the Leafs are going to have a chance. Well, you know what? It depends what, it depends what you mean. Like a star, Steve, you made a heck of a play last night on the Mitch Marner goal. And I know that the defensive, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, liabilities are there with, with Morgan Riley, but, you know, he's never been that type of player defensively. I, I think his game is going to round into shape. I, I just do. I think he's, he's too smart a player for that not to happen. But, again, uh, we'll have to see. There's plenty of time for that to come around. Well, but that's the thing. You've got Matthews. You've got Marner. Yeah. You've got Nylander. You know, you've got, you've got Riley. That's a core. Yeah. That's a winning core, and it should be a winning core. And the frustration of all of it is it hasn't been come playoff time a winning core. And, again, we'll, we'll knock this around come April. Yeah. Yeah, never a dull moment in Leafs lane. We'll see what's in store until the uh, trade deadline for Kyle Dubas and the Maple Leafs. Let us know your thoughts on these topics in the comments section below. For Steve Simmons and Terry Koshan, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week on another Sun Sports Roundtable.